We're going to be visiting every spot. We're going to be staying in the Hotel Nacional, where this meeting, this conference was held in 1946. And we're going to be visiting the restaurants. We're going to be visiting a casino that Maya Lansky built. A whole deal. It's going to be great. But let me give you a little bit of background. Hey everyone, welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. Hope everybody is doing well. Everything is very good, very blessed on this end. As always, I give God all the praise, honor, glory, and thanksgiving for that forever and always. I'll always keep doing it. And I got to tell you, thank you again for all the well wishes from my new grandson, Jet Michael Francis. He'll be three weeks old this coming week. And I got to tell you this, people, for those of you who have not yet experienced it yet, I will tell you this, grandchildren are God's gift to all parents for having children. That's for sure. Grand Grandkids are great. They really are. I got seven of them now. Man, I'm getting old, but they're all wonderful, all terrific. Love them all. Just great. And Jet is getting big, you know? It's amazing how Faye's eating a lot. He always looks, it's just great, great, great. So anyway, I want to thank you again. A lot of well wishes for that, but thank you so very much. I have something very exciting to share with you today. I've been given an opportunity. Somebody made me an offer that I just couldn't refuse, and that is to go to Cuba. Yes, Cuba. Now, some of you have been saying, Michael, you're going to go to Cuba, communist country, are you kidding? You probably don't know this because I didn't know it initially. There's probably a hundred flights a day that go from the United States to Cuba. Big tourist operation there. Everyone that goes, they go under the strict guidelines of the U.S. government. And I've made, uh, I've been given an offer rather from a big tour company. They're called Experience Cuban Culture. They, uh, they do everything for you. They get the visas. They take a lot of people over there to experience the Cuban culture. Wonderful, wonderful operation. Great people. And they came to me again with an offer I just couldn't refuse. Michael. You know the Cuban culture, right? I said, well, a little bit. They said, but you know the uh, story of the mob in Cuba pretty intimately well, don't you? And I said, absolutely. They were there from like 1946 through 1959 when Castro started that revolution and they kicked everybody out and the communists took over. But they had a big major presence in there from 46 uh, through 59. And they said, we want you to lead a group of people. We'll set everything up. We'll go to all the hot spots, all the places. We'll visit every place that the mob was immersed in. We'll go to the restaurants, the hotels, the streets, everywhere. And we want you to tell the story uh, when we get to each location. I said, hey, I'd love to do that. Once in a lifetime experience. Uh, so let's do it. So we put a, a, a little arrangement together and our first dates are December 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th. How would you like to spend four days, three Three nights with me not gonna leave your side we're gonna be together the whole time and you're gonna get an experience in Cuba like you've never had before you're gonna get an experience in Cuba I promise you like you've never had anywhere else that's for sure you know they have tours here in the United States they do it in Vegas I think they do something in Chicago maybe a little something in New York but this is Cuba and I'm gonna get into a little bit of the story now just to kind of you know give you a little sneak peek of what we're gonna do but remember I'm telling a story now when we get there we're gonna be visiting every spot. We're going to be staying in the Hotel Nacional, where this meeting, this conference was held in 1946. And we're going to be visiting the restaurants. We're going to be visiting a casino that Maya Lansky built. A whole deal. It's going to be great. But let me give you a little bit of background. It's uh, just before Christmas, I think December 21st, 1946. Lucky Luciano, who was in prison, you know the story there. He got convicted uh, in New York for some big prostitution ring. He got sentenced to like 30 years. But then what happened? His sentence was commuted because he helped the U.S. military in World War II. I already told that story, not going to get into it again. So they commute his sentence and he gets out and I don't know, I think he did seven, eight, nine years, something like that. 
But anyhow, he's home about 10 months. And his whole thing, he wants to consolidate power. Because remember, he's the guy that really put the commission together. He did, you know, he knocked off Mazaria, the whole bit. So he was kind of looked at as, you know, the main guy. So now he wants to consolidate his power. He wants to get everybody together. He can't do it anywhere in the United States because he's got heat. He can't do it in New York. So what does he do? He listens to Maya Lansky, who says, let's go to Cuba. Why Cuba? Cuba was a huge tourist spot. A lot of people from the States went to Cuba during Prohibition. They had a wonderful uh, nightlife there, and they were able to do a lot of things that they couldn't do in the United States. Obviously, they were able to drink, cabaret, have fun, all of that. Couldn't do it in the States, so they did it in Cuba. It was close by, you know, close trip from Miami. So it was a big tourist destination at that time. But, you know, the mob seen it as something else. So Luciano and Maya Lansky, they call for this whole conference, and that happens just before Christmas in 1946. Now, Lansky wanted to do really two things. He wanted to consolidate his power. He wanted everybody to know, hey, I'm back. You know, while he was away, Frank Costello did a great job of running the family for him, was very, very loyal. I'll get into the little bit of, you know, bad blood between Genovese, Luciano, and Frank Costello. But uh, Costello did a great job for him, but now it was Luciano's turn to come and really consolidate all the power in the mob. So he calls together maybe 23 of the biggest guys, big names, I'll get into that, and they all come to Havana because Luciano wanted to establish himself, number one. Number two, he wanted to talk about setting up shop in Cuba, you know? So, gets them all together at this conference. It was like December 21st, the Nacional Hotel, beautiful place, main place in Havana. And, uh, you know, this was a very secure place. As a matter of fact, people from the island of Cuba, residents of Cuba, were not allowed in there. And uh, when this meeting took place, it was even, you know, more secure and that nobody else was allowed to come in. They had a lot of security. You know what? If they would have had a bomb place someplace, they would have knocked out the whole uh, American mob at that point in time. But they didn't. And so big, 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 big meeting, big conference. It was the first conference that they were all together since, I think, 1932, when they were all in Atlantic City at one time. So now they got this big meeting. You know, I'll set it up. You know, Luciano's there. He's at the head of the table. Everybody's coming. Coming in, they're paying tribute to him. They're giving him envelopes. You know, the guy just came home from prison, so they uh, they want to pay their respects. They give him envelopes. That's what Italians do. At weddings, we give envelopes. We don't give gifts and you know register at all these places like they do in California to buy a toaster. No, we give money. So they're giving Luciano money, and quite honestly, he wanted to use some of that money to establish casino business in Havana. Maya Lansky was there. Now, can you have a a meeting like this without people wondering? Remember, you got the CIA, you got the FBI. When they see all these mob guys getting together, hey, what's going on? So what do they do? Sinatra, he's performing at the Hotel Nacional because Lucky Luciano asked him to or told him to, I should say. So the excuse that all these guys uh, used uh, to get together was to come and see Sinatra. Hey, they supported him. And, you know, Luciano and S Sinatra had a relationship. Uh, they were both Sicilian. Their families came from Sicily. I believe Luciano helped Sinatra out in the beginning, you know, might have given him some money. And, and, you know, and again, I want to make this clear. You know, did he have a relationship, Sinatra, with the mob? Yes, obviously. You know, from my father to Joe Colombo to Lucky Luciano, yes. But he was a talented guy. I don't care how much, you know, uh, mob influence you have. If you don't have the talent, you're not going anywhere because it's up to the people to want to see you. You know, you just can't push somebody without talent on anybody. They're not going to accept it. So Sinatra's got a lot of talent. He gets some help from people on the street. What's the big deal? There's nepotism all over Hollywood. There's nothing wrong with that. Sinatra was not a mobster. He had friends in that life. Okay. So he comes over at the behest of uh, Luciano. And uh, that's the reason that everybody's there. Hotel Nacional, Cuba was not off limits at that point. So they're all going to see Sinatra. That was the deal. Now, the president of uh, Cuba at that time was a guy by the name of uh, Ramon San Martin. And, you know, Cuba had a reputation of being corrupt, you know, back then. Hey, it was a poor country. You know, the, uh, the government was corrupt. And this guy, San Martin, you know, he was kind of on the mob's payroll a little bit. He was corrupt. He was making some money. And, you know, that's the way it goes. So everybody's there now. And again, establishing the leadership uh, or the control of Luciano, I think that was established at that time. But there was kind of a fly in the ointment with Vito Genovese. You know the backstory there. Genovese wanted to take over the family. He was jealous 
jealous of Luciano. When Luciano was away, he tried to take control. He couldn't. Frank Costello was the boss at that time, but there was bad blood with Genovese. There was a time he had to leave the United States. He had to go to Italy because he was on the run for a case, a murder case that he eventually beat. So he comes back. He's in Cuba, and he's not happy with Luciano. As a matter of fact, what I found out is they actually had a, uh, a physical altercation. Luciano was so upset with Genovese that he was in a hotel room with him and he gave him a beat. Now Genovese was, you know, allegedly a tough guy. He was a small guy, but Luciano was bigger and tougher. He didn't like Genovese. He knew that he was plotting against him. He actually gave him a beating because Luciano found out that Genovese set him up. And you know, when I say set him up, he let the uh, law enforcement know that Luciano was there and that he was plotting to set up shop in Cuba. So even way back when, you know, guys on the street, they used law enforcement when they could. So what do you call him? Do you call him a rat now? Do you call him a cooperator? You call him whatever? He actually set Luciano up. You know, do you call him an informant? Whatever you want to call him. But this has been happening in that life way back. I'm not saying everybody did it, but you know, when it was convenient, you know, to have the help of law enforcement to get rid of one of your enemies, you're on the street. You do what you got to do. That's what happened. And this goes way back to the days of Capone and even before that. When you had to use law enforcement to help you, you had to pay him for it, you had to get a favor in return, people did it. And this was definite that Genovese helped set up Luciano. I'll get into that in a minute. But there was a lot of things that were being discussed here. Number one, setting up the casino operation. That was a given. Meyer Lansky, Frank Costello, they were going to do it. Gambling was lucrative. The island was the perfect place to do it. It would attract a lot of tourists from the United States. That's what they wanted. And of course, that would mean tax money, bribe, bribery money uh, for the government. So this Ramon San Martin, he went along with it, right? So now, another thing they had to discuss there. You know, the Flamingo Hotel was being built in Las Vegas. A lot of anger, I would say, with uh, Bugsy Siegel. Benjamin Siegel. Bugsy, he didn't like that name. Uh, because of the overruns, the money that was being spent on the Flamingo, and it hadn't opened yet. So it got to a point where his life was in jeopardy. Maya Lansky, they had to decide what they were going to do with Bugsy Siegel. And I think it was during that night that a decision might have been made to take him out. I don't know over that for a fact, but I know it was something that was being discussed. And you know, Meyer Lansky and Luciano were very close with Bugsy Siegel. They didn't want it to happen. They were trying to give him every chance they possibly could. But that's another whole story. You know what happened? He eventually got murdered in his home in Beverly Hills. Uh, whether that was the order that came down during that conference or not, I don't know. But I do know it was discussed there. That was one of the reasons that they were there. Genovese, you know, hates Frank Costello because Costello uh, took over for Luciano. He was the acting boss while Luciano was away. Very, very uh, loyal to Lucky. Genovese didn't like that. He wanted to take control of the family. So what he wanted to do, he wanted to eliminate Luciano get him out so that he could take over. I think he felt that he could handle Costello, but Luciano was another story. He had to get rid of him. So what does he do? He tips off the U.S. government that Luciano is there and he's planning to do business in Cuba. Now, there was some people in um, the United States and different law enforcement uh, uh, agencies that didn't like Lucky Luciano. They didn't like the fact that he got out early from prison and they wanted to put him away. And I got to tell you this, another thing that was discussed during that conference, this I know for a fact, was whether or not the families were going to get into the drug business. Luciano did not want that. Maya Lansky did not want that. They did not want drugs. Genovese, as we know, he did want drugs and he had undermined Luciano and Maya Lansky by speaking to all the other guys that were there. And by the way, who was there? Stop. And by the way, who was there? Joe Adonis. Joe Bonanno, Tommy Lucchese, Carlos Marcello, Santo Traficante, Albert Anastasia, all the big guys were there. Well, Genovese had already set the stage and undermined them and let them understand how much money was into drugs. So Luciano tried to say, hey, we're not going to do drugs, but he was overruled. He lost that. And they said, no, we're going to be in the drug business. And that was one of the plans that they had for Cuba you know, to do their drug business out, out of Cuba. And uh, Luciano lost on that, but that's what Genovese wanted. So Genovese actually tips off the U.S. government that Luciano, he said, was planning to do uh, drugs out of Cuba to set up a worldwide network for a drug operation. It wasn't true, but he set them up. So what happens? All right, I know you're confused. Hey, what's happening? Different location, different clothing. Michael looks different. What's going on? Let me tell you quickly, uh, for some reason, the last three minutes of the file got corrupted 
and I got on a plane and jumped to Australia before we found this out when we handed the video over. So here I am. I'm in Melbourne, going to do a big show tonight. But we want to finish up this video because Cuba is very, very important. We were telling the story. I think this is where I left off. When Lucky Luciano was in Havana, had this argument with Genovese because he found out that Genovese actually set him up. Wanted him deported because Genovese wanted to take over the family. So you know what happened? Luciano finds this out. He gets Vito in a room. Now Vito's a small guy, you know, a tough guy, but a small guy. And he actually gave him a beating in the hotel room. Luciano gives Genovese a beating, tells him, I know what you're doing. You're trying to get me deported. You want to take over the family. It's a whole big thing, right? So that's how this thing kind of ended. And what happened, they put enough pressure on the, uh, the U.S. government, on the FBI, to, uh, to go in and get Luciano and have him deported back to Italy. So that's when he was taken out of uh, Cuba. It's a great story. I have so much to tell about what happened, you know, in, uh, in Cuba for those probably 12, 14 years when the mob was down there. My former associates were down there. And yeah, I do call them my former associates. We were all part of the same life, except for Maya Lansky. He was Jewish, Bugsy Siegel Jewish, but intimately involved with Luciano and things at that point in time. You know, it's a great story, people. I can't wait to lead this delegation, but there is some urgency here. We got to get this show on the road. A lot of people, since we've been posting it on social media, have jumped on. A lot of interest in having this done. We can only take a limited group. So if you're interested, Interested, go to the website, register right now, look into it, see if it's for you. I am not going to leave your side for three nights, four days, three nights. We're going to have a great time. And I'm telling you, you know, the culture there is magnificent. I know some people are saying, Michael Cuba, it's perfectly safe. You know, we've, we've been assured of that. I wouldn't go if it wasn't. Uh, we're going to have a great time. So jump on the link, look in. My people are there. They're ready. They're waiting uh, to speak to you about it, to give you all the information. Remember, they handle everything. They get the visa. They get the flights from Miami, the hotel, all the, everything is all set. All you have to do is jump on. We're going to have a great time, okay? And this is one of many trips that I'm making next year. We're going back to the UK. Uh, where else are we going? We're going to Monaco, possibly Georgia. We're going to be all over the place, but Cuba right now, front and center. It's great. And here I am in Australia. We're doing two big shows here. And man, I just love interacting with all of you. So hopefully, you know, you're going to jump on board and we're going to go. We're going to have a great time. Bring your wives, bring your family, whoever you want to come, <laughs> you know, whoever you want to bring with you, uh, do it. It's going to be a once in a lifetime experience. That's it for today. How do I always leave you? Same way, no matter where I am. I could be in Australia. I can be in the UK, I can be in Georgia, I can be anywhere, I can be on the moon. I'm going to leave you the same way. Be safe, everyone. You know, from here, I'm still watching what's going on in the United States, man. You know, this whole border crisis, unbelievable. Be safe, be healthy. God bless each and every one of you. And I always mean that when I say it. Yes, I'll see you next time.